Welcome. This is the sculptor Kelly Borsheim. Today we're going to talk about carving marble, a sculpture that um, right now I'm just going to title Atlas because it's Atlas holding up the world, what happens when he gets tired. So I want to think of a shorter, nicer title for that. But in the meantime, I'm just going to refer to him as Atlas, uh, the Greek mythology semi-god. Uh, so we're going to talk about the blocks that you have when you're carving stone and how I know when to take off certain areas that were sort of safety rocks or possible future composition elements. And um, let's get to it. Hope you stay tuned. There are several videos here put together um, at a time, so don't leave when it sounds like I'm saying goodbye. So until I actually, uh, until it finishes. Thank you so much. And please comment and question. It really helps me develop content. Thank you. Let's go on. All right, so now what I'm thinking is that I want to use my favorite bird's eye view of this. So I come up over this way, and I can see that I'm starting to get an elliptical feel to the body, although really I did this before with the diamond blade because um, I haven't really touched this with the chisel. However, look at the head. Yes, I have the shape of a head up here, sort of, but the drawing that I did, this part here is coming out towards me. Do you see that? Now, if you were to turn your head, I don't know if I'm showing this or not, but I have my shoulder back here. The shoulder, the center point of your figure, the shoulder is actually on the back half, okay? And that's a problem. If, you, if someone ha does posture like this, then no. But if you have normal posture, the shoulder will be, the, the center line for your body should be about here. So my point on this is, he's going to be turning his head towards me this way. But I'm never going to have the chin going over, like, I mean, he could if he's really looking back and stressing, but if he's exhausted, he's not going to have the energy to do that. Plus, let's be fair, I'm going to have his face pushed up against a cloud or something. So, in that respect, if I turn my head as much as it's comfortable to do without really stretching a muscle, you can see the chin is going this way, okay? So, it's maybe 45 degrees from the sternum that's going straight this way, 45 degree, and then 90 degree would be this way, okay? So what I'm saying to this is that the cheekbone sticks out more than the chin when you get to the profile. Do you see? See, if I look straight at my face here, do you see it goes in like this? So when I come to my sculpture, what I want to do is say, all right, here is the point for the shoulder. The shoulder blade is going at an angle this way, so that is going to be, you see, I'm going to have this rounded at some point to go into the deltoid because it's an ecliptical body. It's an egg shape on the body. So what that means is that the chin is going to be right about here, you see? So in, event, in, a, in, in essence, right now I can start to shape the head by removing some of this. If I say that's about the mouth area, the cheek area or something, then I can go diagonally down into this point and get rid of this material here, you see? Not too much because I need this shoulder to connect up to the trapezius that's twisting, all right? But it's a way to start doing stuff because I'm going to keep redrawing the head as I go. That's why it's called direct carving. Anyway, and now I also see that it, here I measured his little bum because, you know, boys have tiny little bums, you know, if they're built the way we think gods should be built. And it gets wider up here where the rib cage comes around as the egg shape here, right? But I look at this tiny little bum. Okay, well, I get that it's a small figure, and it should be the height of the head, technically speaking, so it, it's going to go down further. Also, this is the line where my drawing ends down here, where the feet are actually. So the floor is right here. I have to push a lot of things back. I haven't decided to get rid of this part of the marble yet because I don't know what I want to do. Maybe I want to make that some kind of little ornament here to show that it's ground versus, I don't know. So um, my point is that um, I'm looking at this from a total perspective and it could be that it looks too thin to me. However, I also know from this point I want the knees to be going out. So this will go in and then it'll start to go out while the knees spread, okay? So it could be that it will work out just fine. And with the arms here, I've got to have space for the arms. It's just funny because it looks a little bit bigger on this side. And it could be that I didn't draw the center point very well from the head. So um, these are the considerations that I have and I appreciate your watching. Thank you very much. Ciao, ciao for now. All right, so this is where I'm now. I'm try I've am i been trying to get the... Um, hi, this is Kelly Borsheim. I'm talking about stone carving and putting in the 
gesture of the figure to get the energy in early on in the piece. This is a piece about Atlas and the idea is what happens when Atlas gets tired. His job in the Greek mythology was to hold the skies separate from the earth. So down here is the earth and he's holding up a cloud or something. Originally it was going to be the world because um, in some point in history artists mistakenly made this a globe and so I think that's where we holding up the trouble of the world on our back kind of thing. Anyway, I want to put in the, the exaggerated gesture here, so I've been carving away this, measuring out feet and legs. And the thing is, I really like I want to put a shapely he has to be a shapely muscular guy, but I need to remember that the hardest thing to do in stone carving, from my point of view, is to have two things touching without overlapping or without becoming too far distant. So the th even if he's holding a cloud, or instead of the world I originally intended before I understood the difference, um, anyway, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is he's holding is going to be pushing against his head and against each point of his arm. It'll probably hit the shoulder because the shoulder is a strong point in the body. And then it'll probably hit the forearm muscles down here. So I need to remember that this shape needs to not be cut away. And also, in case I need to move the arm in closer this way, I have the material. The other thing is, you see the natural face of this stone piece here. I rather like that texture, and I also kind of like the color embedded. And I do tend to like when I get a, a piece of abstract uh, rock, meaning that it's just a natural piece that kind of got found or something. It's not a cut block from the quarry is what I mean. I like to use some of this stuff in the composition. So it could be that that would work in and also because the piece is not very thick you see I want to have the feeling of clouds without uh, having that in. So right now I'm trying to get the angle in, trying to get this in, but I need to remember not to cut so much away from the face, from the from the body, that I lose the cloud. Right now I can have the cloud come out and blend in with this a little bit, but I'll still want to get some roundness in. So those are the kinds of things I'm thinking about as I'm developing the anatomy of the figure. This is the, the knee, the knee joint right here, and the thigh and the lower leg. So I, I'm measuring this in. I've got a circle here, meaning don't cut this. And I want to start cutting in here because the hips are going to be narrower than the then the knee, the legs are spread because it needs to support the the weight of what he's holding on him. So uh, I have a very tired thing. You can see here in my maquette, you see the angle a little bit there. So the hips are quite narrow and the legs are going out away from him. So uh, that's what I'm measuring out right now. And I have this as my base here. So I still have a lot to dig out. And the feet are going to start at this height here, this line, and then they're going to go down into this base, well, wherever the second marking is, which is probably now missing. But anyway, this is getting a bit long. I just wanted to share with you what I'm working on. Uh, thank you for watching. Comment, please. That really helps me even more than your likes and your subscribes, but do those as well. I appreciate all that. But yeah, the comments really help me, so thank you. And let me know if you like this content or not. Ciao, ciao. I have a tendency to want to work all day, and so the thing is I have to remember to give my tools a rest. If I can feel they get a little hot, which is one reason I like these fingerless ones, uh, gloves, um, then I can give this a break, but, and I can always stop and think. Right now I'm trying to consider what this part of the stone adds to the composition, and I think it adds nothing. So I'm really thinking that I need to just kind of curve this around and cut off this entire chunk because it adds nothing to the storytelling, the composition. Um, 
even if I had a little flower or something here, it wouldn't it wouldn't do anything. I think it would just uh, be a secondary focus. Um, I'll probably do that tomorrow though when I want to get the diamond blade out and do some other stuff. So right now what I'm trying to do is again push the body back this way and on the cuts I'm doing here I want to go into the cloud but I don't want to make an undercut because I have a feeling that right here I've already made a strange little thing to make a poofy so I may want to push all this forward and um, We'll see, but right now I want to get the slant. If I can get the slant and start putting the feet in and the legs a little bit, I'll have a better idea of how everything's working and whether I should push it back or not. Okay? Thank you for watching. Ciao, ciao. Oops, I left the other gloves at home. Uh, okay, so I'll have to use these gloves. I prefer to have gloves that protect my actual fingers when I use the diamond blade. Um, this is just for chiseling and sanding when I have to protect my hands, but this is a little bit dangerous. I don't recommend this. All right, so let's see what I want to do. Cut off. I realized that to not cut this off after thinking about it means that I've been thinking about it subconsciously for a long time and therefore I want to get rid of this. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Right. So this is a little precarious here. Just a short cut and that's how that's how accidents happen. You saw me checking the blade earlier, and um, this is something I do every time I uh, start my disc, is I punch this here and turn it until it slips in to tight, and I make sure it's really, really tight. Then I make sure that this button is released, because sometimes it sticks, especially if you get dust and things in there. So what I do is let the button go and then make sure that it turns freely so that when I start the power, I don't have any problem. Then, after I've done that check, then I plug it in because I don't feel comfortable doing this and putting my raw, my rare, bare hands onto this blade if it's plugged in. I don't feel like that's safe. Okay? It's a good habit to develop anyway. So, here we go. Where is it going? And always lay your tool up so that the disc doesn't find itself flipping around and spinning into the dirt, which is never a good thing for your tools. So now, I couldn't get to the angle that I want to get to. I always need more tables. I always need tables. All right, so what I want to do is come here, take a mark. Because it, it could be I want to shape whatever's left of this stuff, but first I need to know what that's going to be. So let me get off this piece. And I don't know why I always try to save as large a piece as marble as I can, because I keep thinking, oh, I'll use it for something else. I mean, this is a small piece, and you can see it's got some cracking in it. It may not even be good quality marble, but um, it's a habit, and I, I don't know that it serves me, but um, I'm going to try it anyway and see what happens. Who knows? Sometimes I just use them to raise up and lower down and hold stuff, but anyway. Quit talking. Start carving. Parli anche da sola. Huh? Parli da sola. No, faccio una video. Sei famoso ora. Tutti due. Una verticale per Instagram, un'altra orizzontale per YouTube. Che cosa fai oggi?
Taglio un po' d'erba. Ah, ok. Allora, if he's gonna cut the grass, then soon my video stops. Because that will be an extra noise and you thought diamonds were annoying. So here we go. There are some things that it's just not smart to try while the motor's going, and changing the handle is really one of them. This is where accidents happen when people start getting impatient and lazy, and you can't do that with stone. I'm guilty as charged of a lot of bad, bad, bad habits, really, but I want to show you how not to do them, not by losing a body part, though. There's some examples not worth fun to do. All right. Maybe this way. Let's see, that's not stable at all. Oh, <laughs> now I'm going to find a hammer and going to see if this snaps off because it might, in fact, maybe this is good and heavy. There we go, finished. For me, the best feeling in the world is after you cut the marble off and you look at the piece and you can't really remember what was there. That's a good sign that what you cut off wasn't necessary. All right, see you the next time.